Juicero is an interesting story because this all happened a while ago, but it was an example of a product being hyped and then completely failing after raising a lot of money. In the case of Juicero, it was they raised $120 million and many have seen it as a sign of Silicon Valley exuberance. Some called it a solution that was worse than the original problem. So here's what they were trying to do in a nutshell. The CEO and founder of Juicero, Doug Evans, thought that if you want to create a raw vegetable juice, just simply, let's say cucumber, broccoli sprouts, kale, you want to juice that. He thought this is a major hassle. You have to have an expensive juicer, then you have to buy all the produce and then you have to cut it down and then you have to put that all through the juicer, which takes a long time. So in his mind, what was a core problem that he saw in the market is that people who own a juicer, they use it like twice a month. That was the problem he saw. The juicer is just too inconvenient. And if you're now thinking, hey, I don't have a juicer, I don't juice at all, I don't juice vegetables, I rarely want to drink vegetable juice, that's a whole different problem. His premise was everybody or a lot of people can benefit from juicing, have an interest in juicing, want to juice, it's too complicated, we need to improve that. On top of that, he realized that if you buy kale or cucumbers or oranges in the supermarket, these have been harvested weeks before. So they have not been harvested yesterday and now they're in the supermarket so he thought hey while we improve the whole juicing infrastructure we can also make sure that people buy produce much quicker so if they make a juice it's actually much fresher so here's a basic comparison on top you can see the way people usually do juices they buy a juicer they usually have some form of moving parts that is actually grinding the vegetables so what people do they get the carrots they cut the carrots to have small pieces put them in the juicer they have to squeeze squeeze it through. They're different technologies that don't all look like this, but this is how you have to do it. You have a juicer, you buy the produce, you have to prepare the produce, and then you can just juice it and it takes time. Just making juice, getting the juicer out, you can easily lose 90 minutes just making one glass of juice. This was the status quo. He thought, how will we change this? We have a different type of juicer and we have a different process for preparing the vegetables and the fruits so that they're already prepared before you even start juicing. Because the major hassle that he recognized was that people have to prepare all of that stuff and if you've done that before it really is a hassle so it's not like he invented a new type of juicer what he thought of was his whole supply chain around that so what he's doing is he has added an extra step so instead of you going to the grocery store and buying the carrots you buy prepared packs from him and he has already prepared the carrots for you. And the juicing part is less of a juicing part, it's basically just a press. You put the prepared pack in there and then all it has to do, it's squeezing it out and then you get the juice. So the whole machine is not doing much. All it has to do is squeeze the pack. And of course, if you're thinking that it is a huge waste to try to prepare all of these fruits and vegetables and put them in a pack and then ship them out to people and you have to cool everything, then yes, this is very expensive if this is a pretty dumb idea it takes a lot of effort just to create the infrastructure but i'm going to get to that in a bit so let's keep going with the premise so i'm just explaining what the basic idea of this company was before i explain how it failed spectacularly after they have come up with the idea that they need this infrastructure the whole supply chain around creating these packs and delivering these packs and then people at home get the pack put them in the juicer and then it just presses it but this whole infrastructure structure around the pack was the first idea but then they thought and now this is the next premise they needed a high-tech internet connected quote-unquote juicer and that juicer had a camera it had wi-fi connection every juice pack had a qr code you would scan it before you use it there would be a whole ecosystem around it it would almost be like an ecosystem lock-in as you have with apple devices apple has its own ecosystem all the apple devices work seamlessly together so if you have one apple device there's an incentive to make sure you have all the other Apple devices because you want them to work well together. And they were trying to do something similar. They were trying to lock everybody in by saying, you can only use our packs in our juicer and we are going to scan it. And if the juice packs is expired, you can't use it. If something is wrong or you're trying to scan the same pack twice, it's not going to work. If you don't have internet, you can't juice anything. So they wanted to have this ecosystem lock in. They even had three different types of apps just to order stuff, scan 
schedule stuff, reminders, trying to really have people revolve their whole life around these juices. Imagine having multiple apps and every week you get the juice packs delivered and then you get a notification, oh, you should take your vegetables. Yeah, this whole thing led to a pretty high price point because the juice packs, they were costing around five to seven dollars per juice pack. The juicer itself, which didn't do much, cost 700 bucks just for the juicing device. And they as a company had pretty insane costs because they had to package and prepare all of these juice items at scale, which was really, really expensive. So what's the background of the whole thing? It was 2013, IoT, Internet of Things was huge at that point in time. Everything had to be smart. Everything had to be connected to the internet. If you have a toaster, it should be a smart toaster. If you have a fridge, it should be a smart fridge. Everything had to be a smart IoT device. So they came in with their juicer idea. And of course, they couldn't really get money for this whole idea, for this whole concept of preparing this whole supply chain, of packaging all of these juice packs and then delivering them to people. So they thought, hey, let's make it a tech company. No, we're not a juice company, we're a tech company. Just like WeWork was not a real estate company, it was a tech company. They thought, we have a camera, we have Wi-Fi, we have three apps, we have an ecosystem, we're going to be a tech company. And if you think this sounds ridiculous, VCs loved it. They invested $120 million over just a few years, including Google Ventures was one of their investors. And there were a few trends that were going on at this time. I mean, the organic trend was a little before that, but at that time, juice and juice fasting was really popular. Even I bought a juicer in, I think, 2013 or 2014. I literally bought a juicer myself at around that time. This was a major trend. All over social media, there were always these things about juice cleanses. There were some really popular documentaries. So they completely capitalized on the juice trend, but also on the IoT trend. And they got a lot of investments. This is how they initially got away with it. People just wanted it. It was a buzzword at the time. And then the next thing, which is, of course, a business model thing. It wasn't just a juicer that the venture capitalists would invest in, they would invest in the potential to create a platform. And I've talked about platforms quite a bit. Platforms are very powerful because they can create their own market or their own ecosystem. Amazon, for example, has this whole Amazon marketplace and they own that. Or let's say mm. Windows or Apple, they have their own ecosystem. Other companies create their whole businesses around the Apple ecosystem or around the Amazon ecosystem. So it's very powerful if you own that market because you basically take a commission on everything. So other companies start working for you. It's very powerful to be a platform. So they thought, hmm, Juicero has the potential to become a platform because they change how people purchase their produce. Now they go to supermarkets, but maybe in the future they have the app, they have the reminders. It's very healthy. You need to get your vegetables. Maybe this is going to be the future platform of how people consume fresh groceries. And a little more context about the founder, because this is quite important. You would wonder why would someone create a company like that? It seems kind of niche, but it also seems like there's a lot of stuff that just has been added on. So what is the vision here? The founder, Doug Evans, he is a vegan and he had his own restaurant chain in New York called Organic Avenue and they were serving fresh vegetable juices. So if you were in New York at the time, they had multiple chains. It was relatively successful. They had about, I believe, 20 million in annual revenues at one point, but the company went bankrupt. They were sold off and then at some point liquidated because the margins were just way too slim. The demand was going down because the whole juice thing was a bit of a trend. And if a trend goes down, your revenues go down, but the cost for real estate for the restaurants were pretty high. So it just didn't work. So it was a classic failure. The cost exceeded the revenues. They didn't have investments. That was it. This was before Juicero. So he had already exited the failing restaurant business, which delivered the fresh juices. But he thought people would still like an innovation where it mm -hmm. comes to juicing because he was into it. He was drinking juices every day, so he loved it. And he assumed that other people would love it too. So they can maybe see the very first flaw because he had this organic shop slash restaurant which was also serving juices, but he kind of realized that the trend was going down, but he still insisted that this is what he wanted to do. And he also knowingly created all of these tech things in order to lure in the investors, even though he later admitted that all of these things were not really part of his original vision. They were just there to attract the investors. Honestly, I mean, it is not fraud and obviously it shouldn't be fraud because investors have to think for themselves, but still just to put in unnecessary features in order to attract investors, it's a little bit on the border. Okay, so now let's go to the timeline, just some start to finish. The company was founded in 2013. 
2013, they had right away a 4 million seed round. And again, tech company, IoT, it combined a lot of different things and trends. So it was attractive to investors. Then in 2014, they had the Series A funding round, 16.5 million. And in 2015, 70 million. So let's remember this. This is a juice company. They're making this juicer and they're making these packs. Why do they need so much money? So except for all the stuff they added on, which is the app and all of that stuff, they had very expensive infrastructure. They needed a lot of facility for law space. Imagine you would have to prepare millions of these little packs that contain cucumber, parsley, some fruit, whatever, berries. You have to make a lot of these packs. Everything has to be cooled and you have to deliver them on time according to wherever they're ordered in the app. So that's pretty insane. And this nationwide in all of the US. So they have to scale a lot. This is very expensive. So they need actual facilities. And this doesn't even include the design of the juicer and all of that, which is also way too expensive, which I'm going to get into. But then 2016, now they launched their product. So for three years, they've been sitting on this. They've been developing. They've put in their blood and tears and sweat. And finally, 2016, in March, they launched the product. The price tag for the juicer, $700. And each pack, as I said, five to seven dollars. And you would get them weekly and you will get more than one. So you have seven hundred dollars up front, and then every week you pay another 50 bucks or whatever to get your 10 juice packs. Probably more because you put them in the fridge. And if you want to have two a day, it's at least 10 bucks a day, so at least 70 bucks a week. So clearly it was expensive. Then they had the Series C, 28 million, and the CEO left. And just about the CEO, because his previous company, Organic Avenue, the rest restaurant chain slash organic shop that failed he also left that company at some point so we're now starting to see a trend so he leaves the company for whatever reason they didn't want him anymore he didn't want to be here anymore whatever the story is the founder leaves they get a new ceo the new ceo was jeff dunn he was the former president of coca-cola north america someone who knew beverages i guess i don't know how useful it is because they're not selling beverages they're selling produce in packs that need cooling and they're also selling hardware which the juices, whatever, new CEO. And then in 2017, they realized the sales are pretty slow. We're selling this juicer for 700 bucks. And this is actually a pretty high price tag because I remember at the time I bought my juicer and this was about 230 euros, I remember. And this was a really good one. You can juice anything and get high quality juice out of it. So they were selling at 700 bucks. So in comparison to other juicers you could buy, this is more than double the money. So sales were very, very slow, clearly too expensive. So they reduced the price from 700 to 400 bucks. And at the same time, you had the first copycat, which was a Chinese company. They filed a complaint for patent infringement against the other company. And now you can see why they wanted to have this whole ecosystem login. They wanted to aggressively defend the use of their system. They didn't want to have other companies have their juice packs and be cheaper or people buy their juice packs and then use the juicer or juicer or buy the juicer or packs and use a different juicer. So they were already going after another company for this then which is absolutely hilarious and if you heard of juicer or you for sure heard about this fact bloomberg released a video in an article pointing out to the world that you can squeeze the juice pack with your hand you do not need to use the juicer and it's faster and you get the exact same amount of juice out of it and just to keep in mind how insane that is because you have to imagine you have this juicer the juicer has a camera it has wi-fi every pack has a qr Code. If you are trying to scan a QR code that is not eligible, or maybe you've already scanned it, or maybe it's a fake juice pack from another company, it's not going to work. They have created an ultra secure system that they always know which pack is going to be juiced. Every pack can only be juiced once. You can't even refill your own pack with, let's say, you cut some carrots, throw in some berries, put it in the pack and try to squeeze it. Not going to happen. This ecosystem was so locked. Everything was paywalled. You would have to pay for each juice and they made sure of that and then Bloomberg puts out the video and they say hey you don't need the juicer just use your hand it literally is like 30 seconds you got it and this is extra insane because they have been doing very expensive engineering and development to create this juicer in the first place you have to imagine all of these engineers sitting in a circle with this juicer and they're trying to make the perfect juicer and not a single one has asked the question how much pressure do we actually need 
for this juice pack or even just tested it. Some intern just grabbing a pack and trying to squeeze it. This hasn't happened or it has happened and they thought it's not a big deal, which is even more insane. So this whole device, the $700 juicer is a perfect example of over engineering something that you didn't need at all. So after that, they were trying to raise another 55 million round. But at that point, it was pretty clear that this company wasn't going to go anywhere. Their sales are really slow. They've just been exposed. The emperor has no clothes. You don't need this damn juicer device. And the press was making fun of them. There was very few positive articles about them from that time. So the company shut down. And here, this is really funny. So this is from Jeff Dunn, the new CEO, who basically jumped in one year before the company failed. At the time, the original founder was having fun at Burning Man. And I looked that up. Burning Man was in August 2017 and the company shut down in August 2017. So he was literally at Burning Man at the time when his company shut down. I don't know what he was thinking. I don't know if he was forcibly kicked out, but it's kind of, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. If you have a company that fails after raising 120 million and the original founder is at Burning Man, it's kind of an odd move. But the new CEO releases a statement. You can still read it because it's on Medium. So he put out a long post on Medium as a response to this Bloomberg article and the video where she squeezed the thing with her hand and said, hey, you don't need the juicer. So he writes, our connected press itself is critical to delivering a consistent, high quality and food safe product because it provides the first closed loop food safety system that allows us to remotely disable produce pack if there is, for example, a spinach recall. In these scenarios, we're able to protect our consumers in real time. So they've been talking about that quite a bit. They said, hey, we want to have this ecosystem lock in to protect the consumers, to make sure that if something is expired, if there's a recall, they're not going to use it. But if you think about it, it was clearly designed to maximize profits. The whole lock in is designed to make sure that they have to pay for the expensive packs because in expiry date is printed on the juice packs. And if you already have an app, even without all of this control over what you can use or you can't use, if you have an app and you know someone ordered the spinach, sent them 20 emails, 20 notifications on their phone, don't use the spinach, throw it away, we sent you a free one. Don't use the spinach, throw it away. Literally 20 times the same notification. You don't need to lock down the whole machine to make sure that they are not going to use it. Oh, you can't use this one. Whatever. He keeps going. Consistent pressing of a produce packs oh this is a good one calibrated by flavor to deliver the best combination of taste and nutrition every time this seems like now they're really stretching for the benefit because she made the video the bloomberg lady made the video where she squeezed it with her hands and they basically say that oh you need the juicer because this flat juicer is perfectly squeezing it much better than her hands are squeezing it perfectly this really seems like grasping at straws i don't think that you're going to notice any difference difference in flavor from the machine press versus the hand press if it's literally the same juice pack. Connected data so we can manage a very tight supply chain because our product is live, raw produce and has a limited lifespan of about eight days. You have the expiration date on the whole pack. The value of Juicero is more than a glass of cold pressed juice, much more. I would actually disagree with that because I think the value of Juicero to the customer has always been a glass of fresh pressed juice, which is why the customers thought, why do I need this? If there is more value, Value, it would be the notification slash nagging to remind you that you should have your vegetables, which I don't think is a customer value. I think that's the classic example of a company or a founder trying to impose certain standards or health standards on the people, which usually people don't like, and the market responds negatively. If McDonald's would say, we are not going to serve burgers anymore, we're going to serve salads, and this is all we're going to serve, then McDonald's would probably be out of business pretty quickly. Because people don't want to be told what to like. They just want to get what is convenient, what is pleasurable, and what they enjoy. So to the products. We got the juicer, which you can see on the top. And then on the bottom, they have three apps for whatever reason. They probably also had Android and iPhone. But they had multiple apps. They had the juicer. The juicer, IoT device, platform, Wi-Fi connected, had a camera. Pretty expensive, high pressure. They were saying that, oh, they have sown so many tons of pressure that this device can put in. And I've read that this was actually an impressive device that it actually had some really sophisticated technology. Technology. It was just too much. If you can do it with your hands, you don't need something that can lift two cars. That's way too much. That's overkill. And then the packs, they have to be fresh. They have to be cool. They have to be organic. They have to be healthy. And it's going to be a subscription, which obviously the investors are going to
trying to laugh because you don't only make money by selling the juicer, you make money every week because people are locked in in your service and your ecosystem. And the main cost driver of this whole product, and of course, all the other stuff is expensive, but all of these packs, it's so many packs. And if you just think about sourcing the produce, has to be organic. That's already quite the price point. But let's say in bulk, they can get it relatively cheap. They bought a huge facility that was already existing. So they moved in and it was all about the production of their packs. So they had to get all the produce, wash it. Has to be super clean. I think they had to wash everything like three times because they can't have any dirt in there because it's a fresh product. They can't have people get sick from it. So they had to really clean it and then prepare everything of all these things. And this in the end was killing them from a cost perspective. Of course, what also killed them was the revenues because they were just not where they wanted them to be. But from a cost perspective, insanely expensive real world infrastructure they had to set up. All of the logistics, all of the manufacturing, all of the facilities, all of the staff doing this stuff. And all of that nationwide as a startup on 120 million. 120 million sounds like a lot of money, but if you have a major nationwide physical hardware infrastructure that you have to set up, this is going to run out pretty quickly. And they raised that money over four years. So this is not a one-time injection. This is already spent over multiple years. But I want to point out the irony of this whole thing because the reason he started this, the founder was that, hey, making a juice is so annoying and it's so much effort that people just don't juice. They have a juicer and they use it twice a month. That's not the point. If you can drink coffee every day, if you have a coffee machine, you drink it every day. Why can't you juice every day? Why is this so complicated? But the irony that he was trying to take the burden of all the juicing preparation from the customer and then he wanted to do it and then he failed in it too because it's just too much of a burden. So now to the business model. So I've talked about consumers. So this sounded like a classic business to consumer B2C type model. They sell to normal people like you and me. You have the app, you have your juice, you have the juicer or juicer standing at home. You're all happy. Everything's great. And every week you get the new juice packs and you have your reminders and you have everything you need. But they also had a second model, which is kind of a B2B or B2B2C, meaning business to business or business to business to consumer. Consumer. An example for this is, let's say you're Microsoft. Let's say, hey, all the people working at Microsoft, they're super fat, they're super unhealthy. I don't like this. I want to make sure that all my people are exercising and juicing every day. So you get the juicer or juicer for your staff. So you can have this on a business level where you say, this juice is for my staff. I have the juicer. I pay for all the juice packs. I want to make sure everybody's healthy. And then the other business case could be that you have a restaurant, let's say an organic restaurant or a high-end restaurant. We also want to offer to our guests that they can and order a juice. So they don't want to have all of the mess with all of the cleaning and all of the preparation. They want to just get the juicer off. They pay 700 bucks for the device. They have all of these juice bags and then they can sell that to their guests in the restaurants. This would be B2B2C because it still goes to the end consumer. And the B2B case for Microsoft, for example, this will actually be business to business because there's no further reselling or repurchasing. And what's interesting is that I read that this B2B case actually had some traction because there really was a benefit where these companies for saying we don't care about the price if we have something that is just easier than having to make juices ourselves for our customers then we would buy that anyway and everybody knows that businesses always pay more so businesses don't mind paying too much if it's less of a hassle but honestly i don't think that this would have gone anywhere as well because every single restaurant that would like to offer that to their customers or to their guests or let's say any company they would only do that as long as this is a trend as long as people have a demand for it but since this clearly was a trend i think companies would have ditched that as well and restaurants would have also probably not been too interested it actually reminds me quite a bit of beyond meat because beyond meat had a similar problem when it came to business to consumer and now they're going a little more on business to business where they have these large agreements with mcdonald's or whatever where they in bulk sell their products to other companies instead of the end consumer because the end consumer demand isn't really there so this is kind of the last resort even though they make less money from it it's a little safer so there was a suggestion that this could have worked I would not be convinced because I think this product failed not for one reason. It failed for at least five reasons. So there were a few things that were wrong with the whole concept right from the beginning. Number one is the people who religiously juice, who really are into juices, they are not that common. I mean, juicing now is probably in the mainstream in the sense of that everybody knows about it, but it's not that popular. So I've stopped juicing a long time ago. I actually gifted 
gifted my juicer to a friend. My friend juiced a lot and then he completely stopped. So I think he has juiced in a while. I have family members who have a juicer. They haven't used it in a long time. This was a trend. This is the first one. The second one, the people who are really into juicing, they don't appreciate if you have a paywall and you lock the whole thing in the internet. The people who really like to juice every day and you're very conscious of their body, these are also the types of people who make sure that they turn off their phone when they go to sleep. Maybe they also turn off their Wi-Fi. They want to make sure that everything is a little more natural. Everything is a little less modern, less harmful, less radiation, less additives. All of the negative things of modern lives that might be harmful to our bodies. So to require a juicer to have internet to even work is kind of ridiculous considering that crowd. And then the idea of juicing is nice, but what you're doing is you're separating most of the fiber, most of the solids from the juice or from the watery part, which is very wasteful. You're throwing away much of the plant just by weight. And also everything is in these plastic packs. You don't even allow people to reuse them. And then on top of that, your juicer is not even necessary and you haven't even tested that. So people can juice it with their hands. This is a major reason for failure. I think I've already listed about four or five reasons. This is obviously a huge one. If you don't need the juicer, people will stop buying the juicer. And your whole ecosystem depends on the juicer, all of your apps and all of that stuff. And then the infrastructure was so expensive. Yes, you can take away the burden of having to prepare all of your produce, but now you have the burden and you have to scale that. And they haven't thought of that. And I wonder if they had just developed a metal press, let's say just a simple metal press, it's like really cheap or maybe even plastic. If you can do it by the hand, you don't need a metal press. Let's say a 10 bucks metal press, really, really simple, like the ones you make tortillas with. And then you don't need an app. Why do you need an app? You can just have a web version because this also costs money to develop an app. So you cut the juicer, you cut the app and all you have is a website and this metal press. And then on top of that, you put all of your money into developing the infrastructure because this was the difficult bit. This is what killed them because it was so expensive, the whole infrastructure. But the problem is they couldn't have raised the money if they hadn't had all of this tech. If they had some cheap plastic juicer, then this wouldn't have worked. So they needed all of that connection stuff. But yeah, the expensive infrastructure, this was a major failure reason. And then this whole ecosystem lock-in, it doesn't make sense if you think about the product because you don't want to have an ecosystem lock-in for something like butter or something like meat or whatever. You don't want to have an app that reminds you, oh, you have 400 grams of butter in the fridge, better buy some new because you might run out. You don't want to have an ecosystem lock-in for one grocery item. In the end, juice is just juice. It's not something you're going to have all day. It's not something that's that important. It's one more grocery item. If you have something like Apple or something like Android, any type of system that forces you to only use that system and it chases you around all of your apps and you always feel it throughout the day that you are in this ecosystem, this doesn't make sense for juice. It seems absolute overkill to have all of this infrastructure just for one grocery item. And then the last one, which to me is the most ridiculous because I thought that he of all people should know this one. Of all the people who have experience in the juicing industry, he should know it because he had a restaurant chain that was selling fresh juices. So shouldn't it have been obvious to him that if people wanted juices, they could just go to a restaurant and get a juice probably for less money because if you have five to seven bucks per juice pack and you get a small little glass of juice, but you can go to a shop and for five bucks, maybe you get whatever, half a liter of juice. It does seem obvious to me that you would rather go to a juice shop and get a juice there and see what they got rather than having the hassle of ordering the stuff and having everything at home. Because in the end, it's not like you're saving money. It's not like you're paying $1 per juice at home and everything is great. Even if you have a good coffee machine, you have good coffee beans, one coffee made by yourself is going to be relatively cheap if you just calculate down to one glass. But with juicer roll, it's always going to be at least five to seven bucks. So this didn't make any sense. All right, this is the first part of the series. I'm going to do in the next videos reaction to the CEO talking about juicer roll throughout the entire life cycle. 2016, 2018, 2020. Let's see what he has to say because he got really angry after the company failed. Thanks for watching.